how to make oxygen in remote places or when you suddenly need more of it. The best way to make oxygen is from air. Now, air consists of 80% nitrogen and 20% oxygen. The problem is that sometimes you need to have more oxygen. Then what you need to do is you need to build a machine and the machine has to take in air and it should take away nitrogen and it should produce oxygen. Now, we usually call this oxygen, but as a matter of fact, this usually is something between 30% to 90% oxygen in most cases, which will be enough when you need more oxygen. The question is, what does this machine here look like? So what is this black box here? How can we do that? And can we do that locally in a manner that is feasible for small hospitals, for people in remote places, and whoever is interested in making more oxygen. In the following, we're gonna learn how to solve the problem to construct such a machine. Number one of our machine is, it obviously requires some kind of electronics, so a control. And it requires an active component. And that will ultimately allow us to separate the oxygen or oxygen enriched part from what we don't want, which would be the nitrogen rich fraction. And let me also call this oxygen rich gas, okay, to be a bit precise. Now, in the following, we're gonna see where we can source this because the plan obviously is to get this all out of stuff that we can find locally. The simple most way to do such a machine is by so-called pressure swing absorption. Now, pressure swing absorption requires something that has a little bit the look of a column. And that something should be filled with little particles. And these particles, they have a very specific problem or property. If we have these particles um, and air gets in, then nitrogen loves to sit on the particle, whilst oxygen actually travels quite easily through the particles. So you may imagine if we start feeding air into a column that contains these special particles, then all the nitrogen will go into particles and oxygen will get through. So we're gonna have oxygen here and we're gonna have, I'm gonna draw them bigger now, otherwise, It'd be difficult to see. Uh, so we're going to have the particles. Uh, it's not to not 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 to scale. Uh, so uh, what will happen? The nitrogen will go in here. And oxygen comes out. So that's a nice situation because it means if we open here, we're gonna have oxygen rich gas that gets out of it. Now, to be a bit more specific, if we only wait for a long time, then this doesn't work. If we put in air here, um, and we have our, again, not to scale particles in here, then, if I do this for too long, like minutes to hours, okay, then all beats 
or filled. And what happens then is that both the nitrogen and the oxygen get through and then, well, nothing is, is there anymore. I just get air in and air out. So that's not what we want. So we obviously have to interrupt it and start over again. That means at some point we have to do a cyclic operation. So let me explain. We start with a bed here. We enter with air and we get out oxygen and we discard the nitrogen. Now, after a moment, um, the bed will be all full with nitrogen. And so what comes out is, is no good anymore. So what do we do is we stop, okay? Um, so what we do is we stop here and we just open here and we let this out again. Okay, and after this has, this has been empty, we're here and now it's kind of like empty. So we can restart again. Uh, over here too, um, this here, the beads are empty and they will fill up. <clears throat> so in order to realize this, we need two things. We need a column and we obviously need something like a wall. Okay, we have to open close here. And I'm explicitly not using engineering language here. This would be a valve. And here we have another valve. Uh, and then obviously we need the particles to go in here. So we need material. We need a container and we need two valves, okay? And we can either run them manually or by electronics. Now, obviously manually will be quite a pain and the electronics are preferred, but obviously electronics is more complicated, okay? So the following, let me try to guide you um, through what we need, okay? We need one, we need this material. Two, we need the column. Three, we need the valve. And four, we optionally need the electronics. So, number one, we need the material. So, the material is complicated. It's called a zeolite LE. X, there are others that work a little bit, but this one is by far the best. Now, without going into the details, LEX is a material that is produced from silicon dioxide, aluminum dioxide, dot sodium, and that makes first a material which is called 13X, which is also zeolite, and then you can convert this into LEX, okay? The lithium form of the zeolite. Now, the big thing is, where do we get the stuff to do that, okay? So this material is found as a dryer in many industrial setups or even domestic dryers, okay? You can find that quite broadly. It's called, it's called a molecular sieve or a zeolite. That's more or less the same thing. Not exactly. People would kill me in the field, but um, 13X is used to dry stuff. Okay, and it's used in pneumatics. Um, as a, usually, it's a, a granular stuff, so it's little little beads. <clears throat> now, how do you convert it into LEX? Well, you obviously need lithium. Okay, so you need lithium, and you need to put that in. Now, luckily, that works actually quite well. So the sodium that is that is over here, okay, so here we have sodium. We don't want that, okay? We want the lithium to go in. So if we put lithium with the, with the 13X, actually sodium gets out, okay?
Okay, so that's really cool. That means for once, nature does something that we want. Now, the question obviously is, where do we get the lithium from? Okay, this here will be the big question. Now, <clears throat> one way to get lithium is from lithium batteries. Mm -hmm. And we can get lithium. And if you put the lithium plus water, be careful. Huh? This will blow up if you don't, if you're not careful, you'll make fire. Uh, you can end up with a lithium containing base solution. Uh, this is very, very, very corrosive and dangerous for the eyes for skin and eyes. So you should really be careful that you wear corresponding safety goggles. Huh? This is really important. Now, how do you get the lithium out of the batteries? Um, we're gonna see that in a, in, a, in a separate cell. So if we get this out of batteries, you can find them from mobile, mobile uh, machines. Uh, smartphones or laptops. Or there is some, what is called lithium batteries, single use. They are perfect because they contain lithium as a metal. They're the easiest one to take away, okay? So this will be separate movie. Huh? <clears throat> so once we have um, our lithium, So this is basically metallic lithium plus water. Uh, we can check the content if you want. And you can do that via titration, titration by vinegar, okay? Because Le OH is a base, so if I put in acetic acid, and this is the abbreviation for acetic acid, uh, this will react to LeO acetates, so this will be called lithium acetate plus water. And so this is alkaline, this is an acid, and this is more or less neutral. So what you can do is you can measure um, how much lithium hydroxide you have if you take vinegar and you look until this thing becomes neutral. So in in practice, how you do this is you're gonna have your your lithium. So this will is gonna be your batteries. Sorry for that. Batteries in water for the solution. So take out one one hundredth of the volume and then put this in a smaller container. And now you add vinegar. Uh, so you put in vinegar, but you put the bottle on a balance and you put in um, a pH paper or you can also put in some blue cabbage. Uh, it will actually turn uh, red if it becomes acidic. Okay, so the blue cabbage um, goes from blue, then it's alkaline, to red color with the acid. You can check this with vinegar okay um, so that's good that's your indicators that allows you to find out how much vinegar you actually put in okay so you put in vinegar and then you can calculate okay let's assume your vinegar on the on the label it says 45 grams per liter acetic acid um, and let's say your you your volume of lithium hydroxide solution 
Yeah, so this was up here. So your volume was um, something like uh, 50 milliliters and you used uh, 100 milliliters or gram of vinegar, comma, then you can now calculate what this means, okay? So I'm gonna take a new sheet here. So we had 50 milliliters of your water battery stuff, battery mix, and this was equivalent to 100 grams Um, <clears throat> grams of vinegar, okay? And this was at 45 grams per liter. So um, for the chemist, they will understand 45 grams is a certain amount. And if I take acetic acid, then 60 grams is what I would call one mole. So um, this will be 0.75 mole of acid per liter. So 100 grams of vinegar is, is 0.075 mole. And now luckily, the thing is very easy. One LeOH is one vinegar, so acetic acid. So we can just say, if you need 100 gram of vinegar, then we obviously had 0.075 mole Le in 50 milliliters, okay? And that means if I, 50 milliliters is, is 1 20th of a liter, so I have 20 times 0.075 mole um, in one liter, huh? and that is, uh, <coughs> let me see, 1.5, uh, 1.5, mole of lithium per liter, okay? So this is the content, how much lithium we got out of batteries, okay? Actually, typically you can say you have 0.3 grams uh, per ampere hour of LE cells, okay? So, for example, If you have batteries like the, the traditional um, uh, uh, unit cells that you have in batteries, they usually have 2.6 ampere hours per cell at about 3.7 volt, okay? So these will contain 0.3 grams per ampere hour times 2.6 ampere hours, and you never can get everything out of it. So you're gonna end up with something like maybe um, 7.8 grams of lithium. Um, uh, oh, sorry for that. Uh, so you're gonna end up with something like uh, 0 0.7, um, 0 0.7, maybe a little bit more, 0.78, uh, theoretically, 0.78 grams of lithium per cell. That's not too bad because one mole of lithium is 6.9 grams lithium, okay? So uh, you, can, you can quickly see that if we take 10 cells, is one mole, okay? That's quite a lot, okay? So, now we got the lithium, like a lithium solution. Now we have to make the, you have to, to understand how we make the beads, okay? So now we take, uh, we take the, 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 the 13X, okay? And let's calculate this for one kilogram. And then you add to this um, the LeOH, so this will be a solution, okay? Uh, and now you need to know how much you need, okay? So, um, the one kilogram of 13X is approximately this, sodium, SiO2, and aluminum oxide. So this has a molecular weight of 60 plus uh, 59. So this will be roughly 120. This is 23. Um, 
So you're gonna have about seven moles per kilogram. Uh, this here is um, seven, so 6.9. This is uh, 17 grams per mole. But now we just need the lithium. So you need a solution, the LEOH solution. You obviously need about seven moles. For one kilogram of 13x. Now, how do you do it? Well, that's the simple most part. Just take a container, you put in the beads, and you put in the solution, and then here comes the easy part. You just wait. Best you put this at 60 to 70 degrees C. Uh, so this is a relatively simple thing to do. Okay. Next, you need to take the tube, okay? You fill in the stuff, okay? This one should be powdery, or it should be like something like 0.2 to 0.6 millimeters. If you have a sieve, then you should sieve this, okay? Um, the once you have this in, uh, how much you need? Well, uh, the, the more the better, but if you can fill a tube with something like 0.3 to one kilogram of LEX, that'll be enough for roughly supplying oxygen for one person. Um, next thing we have to connect uh, the valves, okay? So here we need to put our switches to switch where oxygen gets in or out. So we need to connect the valves. And then again, next thing, we obviously need to connect this one to a compressor. So usually you find this one in car shops, uh, in repair, uh, painters have, have uh, compressors, also uh, woodworkers use this as for nail guns. Uh, so you need a compressor, you need to hook this up to your tube, and then you're gonna have to pump in uh, air and get it out. Oh, one thing that I forgot, um, you should dry this, okay? Dry it, okay? You're gonna have to see this in a separate movie, also the details of how to separate, how to do this, okay? So once we're here, we now have the setup, and uh, so we have the tube, okay, which is filled with our stuff that we just made before. Um, and then we need to have the valves. And we have the compressor. Okay. And now what we have to do is, if you see a little bit how to do this, okay, so if I have time here, Let's say we start here, and here's something like uh, maybe one minute, and here would obviously be two minutes. Uh, then what we do is uh, we're gonna open um, the first valve. Let's take this one, okay. We're gonna open this for a moment, okay. And then, uh, so that the stuff will fill in, and this depends maybe on the size of your bed. Um, and then we're gonna have to wait, okay? So we're gonna have to occasionally uh, make it open this. And uh, so this will be a certain time. This will be some kind of like fill time. And then we're gonna have stuff that comes out. So we're gonna let it out. Uh, so this will be uh, O2 out. Uh, and that time is going to be usually shorter. Plus, there's going to be another one, which is we're going to have um, the nitrogen go out. Okay, so this the N goes out. And that's the same wolf here. Okay, so we will let the the waste nitrogen to get out here. Hey, okay. sorry for that. So 
the waste, we're going to be going to let this out. So our control, whatever it is, and it can also be you manually, but that I would not think is, is feasible for a longer time. Um, so what you're going to do is you open one, we call this one, um, and then you wait for a given T1, and then you open number two. Uh, usually you also close number one. Uh, this will be, again, wait T2. Uh, usually this is shorter, okay? And then you close um, the second one, okay? Close to, um, keep one open, and all N2 gets out. Uh, and then you restart it. Start it. So this is the most simple version of this. Obviously, it's going to be a much more complicated one. Uh, the more complicated one will be in a separate movie. So now, um, I hope I could explain you a little bit how this works. The key element is this material. Okay. If we don't have this material, there is relatively there's not much you can do okay for this one the tubes you can use just some water tube um, or some 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 tubes that you have back home what works very nice is reverse osmosis uh, tubes for water purification they already have all the connectors that we need here okay um, but there's 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 also water there are hoses um, there is a pressure air pressure cylinders. There's all kinds of tubes you can use for this. Um, the valves are probably a little bit more complicated. Okay, so where do you find valves? You get them from coffee machine. Okay. Um, steam ironing is one, and then pneumatics. Pneumatics are ubiquitous when you uh, are somehow close to mechanics with something. So pneumatics is probably your best source um, to find uh, valves that will be suitable for this. Um, so the best place to locate all this will be, again, car repair, painters with guns, uh, woodwork. Um, uh, currently still works eBay. Um, uh, and then obviously the professional ones that supply walls, okay? We suggest uh, to use a low low voltage wall, otherwise this is gonna be complicated. 